Yo, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Friday night, a couple days of rest and relaxation. Another week down, and no, the hedgies have not covered diddly squat. Good all around today. I love today's trading day. It traded a little bit different than your average Friday with AMC. We watch this thing for months now. We can basically map a day out from uh, what's going to go on, you know, in the last, especially the last six weeks, you know. It's been that hammer down out of the gate, consolidate, whatever the case is. It, it's been just about the same for the last, you know, six weeks, seven weeks before our run up there. Um, so I love today. We'll touch on that in a minute here, too. Also, to you guys, uh, if you haven't seen Review Dork's video uh, that he did, I think it was today. I watched it earlier. It had got me thinking, too, with this whole thing about patience. Um, for me, it was about three months ago, and I said it in a video to where I truly got away from looking at this thing all day long. There's times where I'll sit down and I'll watch the chart for 30 minutes at a time, just see what's going on. I did it today for a good solid 20 minutes at about, now nah, I did it for half an hour. I did it from uh, 30 minutes before the market closed. I watched the last 30 minutes, right? So I truly think that most everybody out there has patience. I think a lot of folks get worried that, hey, is everybody going to run out of patience and this thing's going to be done and everybody's going to sell? To me, that absolute no way in hell. There, there's not a shot in hell. And I judge that on a bunch of things, reading all the social media platforms like we all do every day. Um, even with my channel here, you know, I've got a smaller channel, as you guys know. I read through every comment. I try to comment on a ton of them in there if I have time to do all that. But to me, in engaging everything, whether... The video topic was something about, um, you know, holding or a FUD article or not selling it in the 70s, um, whatever the case is, right? Every comment that I have read, I have not read anything negative for the most part, right? A couple little turds here and there that we ignore, or I, they delete them after you savages attack them on some FUD post or whatever. And that's very few far between. But long story short, I'm getting off a topic there. I truly believe with the amount of DD that is out there and all you savages go to, whether it's Reddit, Twitter, YouTube, whatever the hell else there is, right? We know this is just an absolute waiting game. For me staying off the computer, all the, you know, not watching the line, um, has helped me a ton in the last three months. Because I tell you what, being in this thing at the end of January, February, March, April, um, part of May, I believe, is when I stopped really, truly watching it all day long. Th those are rough times. But I think the majority of us know what kind of play this is. And it, this whole thing got me thinking. A friend of mine asked me earlier, too. He said, what if somebody, let's just go back to last Christmas. If somebody, one of your family members, anybody, whatever, it's Christmas Day 2020. And somebody says to you, hey, sometime this year or sometime the following year, whatever kind of time frame it was, even if it's five years from now, if somebody told you, hey, you're going to get life-changing money or you're going to be a millionaire, whatever it is, just use the term life-changing money. That is a monster thing to hear for anybody that needs life-changing money. You're going to hold, you're going to do whatever you want to do. Your patience level will be as high as it's ever been because you know it's coming. And in my opinion, most 90, whatever you, 99% know this. So I think to some people say, hey, is everybody going to start selling? I see some, you know, those might be newer apes or whatever that really don't know. Because believe me, back in the, when this thing was five, six, seven, eight bucks, I thought the same thing too. And my cost average, it took me a long time to get my dollar cost average down. My total all-around dollar cost average now is like eight eighty, somewhere in there. But I, when I first bought it in, it was seventeen and some change, eighteen bucks, whatever the hell it was, right? So I, in long story short, we are holding, we are patient, everything is fine. The bottom line is, hold the stock, shorts haven't covered. That's all we need to know. The rest of the DD is super fun. It's super cool to learn. The amount of stuff I've learned alone in the last six months is just incredible. So long story short, you guys, we are absolutely fine. I believe that. Here's today. Here's your fish, right? Okay, let's just say Kenny Griffin threw a line in the water, fish on, reeling it in, blah, 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 in the boat, and then whoop. That's kind of a waste of a hoopy and a doopy 
and then consolidated right across. Beautiful day. That's not your average Friday, right? Uh, let's touch on the old dark pool. Why wouldn't we, right? Low volume. 50.1 million shares traded today in regular trading hours. 32.5 of those were million of those were in the dark pool for an average of 65%. So a little bit up from yesterday, I believe we were at 60, uh, 66% average. We're still there. Oh, and then I keep forgetting about the reverse repo. I'm sure you guys have seen that. Again, 1.1 trillion max to the gills, right? Um, look at this turn of the day. Okay, real quick. Read the header, right? You read the header. It's all in the header. Reddit users are the least valuable of any social network. Okay? What does that say to you when you're just like Reddit users are stupid? That's what I gathered from it, right? But then you scroll down to it. This is a CNBC Fudster article. Um, and all it's really talking about here is like revenue, blah, 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 how the company's doing in comparison to Twitter the big dogs right so uh, this to me is an absolute turd and a punch bowl right reddit users are the least valuable of any social network maybe i'm stupid and i read this wrong but to me that is a turd of the day i'm putting that in the in the bucket for a turd of the day right um beautiful here we go dtcc acceleration settlement why t plus one is the right approach at this time uh look at this handsome gentleman over here michael bodson president and chief executive officer uh let's just touch on a couple things on here on this t plus one the good news is what we believe t plus one is achievable with the right amount of coordination socialization planning and testing a t plus one settlement cycle will significantly increase market efficiency and mitigate risk particularly during times of extreme volatility and would free liquidity cash or shares held to ensure the completion of trades as the FT editorial notes the current system works well and is the right approach for today's marketplace while accelerating settlement beyond T plus one is more aspirational at this time we remain committed to exploring ways to further reduce settlement times. In fact, we have already had the operational capability to clear and settle transactions same day on T plus zero. While existing technology, more than one million same day transactions are introduced and processed at our depository every single day. So, okay, beautiful, sir. Um, speaking of DTCC, on to the news of the day. Um, I really... <laughs> Remember, this guy is taking place on September 1, effective date, September 1, 2021. I really like the wording in this here. Um, there are no repo transaction expiring securities and or trust receipts, i.e. promissory notes. So your napkin apps, your toilet paper, uh, IOUs are, are no longer going to be valid there, boys and girls. So, you know, the, the this is really uh, tightening down on these boys and girls, September or, hey, we still got 10, 11 days left in August, uh, but September with all this crap kicking in, who knows? Cross your fingers, toes, and everything in between. Look at Double A. Got a kick out of this here. Some savage put this together for him with the Double A ape there. Uh, and at Salvador Ruco 10 sent me this <laughs> augmented picture, folks. I try... Very hard to stay focused solely on running AMC and leading it through the COVID-19 pandemic and eventually recovery. But despite that these are serious times, I have to admit that I've been laughing all day. And there was another one that he had. Somebody put together one of those little song thingies too. Yeah, this thing you hear. This was sent to me. <laughs> Creativity I see on the inbound Twitter feed continues to astound me. It literally astounds me. So Adam's getting a kick out of that stuff. Way to go, double A. Way to go. Look at this thing here. SEC officials under investigation for conflict of interest in Ripple lawsuit. Really quickly here. SEC former officials are under scrutiny in the SEC. Remember who we're talking about here, boys and girls, over alleged conflict of interest regarding the agency's handling of the Ripple lawsuit. In a letter, you can click the letter there, uh, FOIA. Empower Oversight noted that the communication involves former high-level officials at SEC. According to the oversight body, William Hinman, the former SEC director, 
Division of Corporation Finance allegedly played a crucial role in SEC's crypto regulation while earning money from Simpson Thatcher Law Firm, his former employer. One other part of this turd. After his tenure ended at SEC, Empower Oversight notes that Clayton joined One River Asset Management, a cryptocurrency hedge fund focusing on Bitcoin and ETH. Over the years, SEC has increasingly faced scrutiny over its handling of cryptocurrency regulations and the Empower Oversight investigations might impact the ongoing Ripple lawsuit. The case recently took a twist after the SEC attempted to delete subtopics relevant to the lawsuit involving Hinman. That's really nice to see. Jesus, man. The, the world we live in, boys and girls, that we are unaware of is mind-blowing and mind-numbing. I'm going to pop this in there for you. I was going to go over it. This was a very, very, shout out to Zero Hedge, too, uh, outstanding article here on Melvin. Just how much trouble they were in borrowing the money from uh, Citadel and Point72. But most importantly, too, in this, you guys, definitely read through this if you have time. Um, it really shows what Reddit did to Melvin. <clears throat> it basically lays it out into here. And remember, that was a long time ago. That was seven months ago when they got in deep, deep doo-doo. Uh, I still believe they took a 55% hit. I st still think they're down 42% or something like that. But definitely read that, you guys. Okay, for your homework assignment... Uh, we have a long weekend, so if you need some reading material, there it is. And then watching material. This was great. This was newer. I ran into this today somewhere. BlackRock, the company that owns the world. This was a very good watch. 17 minutes. It is current from August. I don't know when if it was uploaded then, but I think it's pretty current. Um, what they talk about in there, judging by what they talk about in there. So I'll pop those two in there for your uh, reading and watching pleasure in case you get bored this weekend. Uh, that's it, you guys. Outstanding. Good week. Let's get some rest this weekend. Protein, hydrated, get drunk, whatever you got to do. Uh, you guys know the spiel. And then uh, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.